Today on our 2018 Chevrolet Silverado 3500, we're going to be taking a look at showing you how to install the Curt 7-way RV style trailer connector for the vehicle end. And that's going to be part number C58155. So here's where our 7-way wiring connector is going to look like once we have it installed. We chose to mount it in our truck bed for fifth wheel and gooseneck wiring, although you can mount it at the back of your car for a replacement or in addition to have your trailer connected. It's going to have a nice spring-loaded door, so we're not going to have to worry about closing it. It'll close on its own, as well as a nice seal to keep all the moisture and debris from getting inside of our connector. It's a seven-way connector, so it is going to give us all of our lighting functions, brakes, taillights, turn signals, reverse lights, as well as a 12-volt power source and our trailer brakes if we have a controller installed. Nice feature, it does have that latch like most seven-way connectors do. So once you plug in your connector and this door closes on top, it'll keep it from coming out. Our housing is going to be made of a durable plastic. So it's going to withstand the elements and it's going to look good whether it's inside your truck bed like we have here or at the back of your bumper. Overall, I just really like the look of the connector. It has a lot of the same features as most of the ones on the market like the door and the gasket, but it just has more of a finished look to me, a little bit more rounder edges and not so much of that blocky squared look. I do want to mention that the hardware is not included and any kind of brackets to get it mounted up are not included either, but you can pick up both of those on our website and we have a wide variety of brackets to get it mounted at the back of your bumper or right here in the bed of your truck. Now that we've gone over some of the features and seen what it looks like, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to need to find a spot to mount this. Now, we're going to mount ours right here in the back of our bed so that we can hook up to our gooseneck trailer without having to go underneath the tailgate. So now that we have this rough spot figured out of where we're going to mount it, I'm going to take my drill and somewhat of a small drill bit for a pilot hole and I'm going to drill into the bed. Now I do want to mention you want to be extremely careful. You don't want to push too hard because you don't want to go to the outside and you also don't want to damage anything that's potentially inside. Now we're going to come back with a 2 and 1 8 inch hole saw and cut out a nice round hole so that our connector will fit right in there. Now again you want to be extra careful. You want to try to get it as stable as possible and when you're cutting with the hole saw you're going to want to use high speed and low pressure. Now, it's never a good idea to leave exposed metal on your truck. So, we're going to take a little bit of spray paint and I'm going to spray the inside of the hole I just cut. Now, if you don't have a black bed liner, another trick is you just get some clear spray paint and that way you won't see it. Right behind our bumper underneath our truck, where our factory seven way at the bumper is, but behind that we're going to have a bundle of wires and we'll see that we have some bare wires right here. Now they're zip tied up, so I'm going to go ahead and take a pair of cutters and cut those zip ties out. And we'll have plenty of wire to work with. We're going to need to route these wires towards the hole that we just cut. You may need to unravel it. Fortunately, towards the end of our wires here, we're going to have a legend letting us know what each wire color its function is, which is going to help out a lot when we get up to our connector and start wiring it up. So I'm going to take my wires and I'm going to route them up and over the frame rail here. I'm going to pull some of that excess and go over to the side of the bed rail over here. Try to get as much slack as I can. And then we have a couple different options of how we're going to get this up. If you can, you can actually just reach up the side of the bed rail there and stick the end of the wire through just enough to where we can go up and grab it up top. So we'll go ahead and grab our wires. We're going to see that there's a small screw at the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and loosen that up. It's going to be the set screw to keep the wires nice and tight. 
but we're going to have to get them through the connector first. So we'll loosen it up. You know, you don't need to take it out, but you want to make sure it's nice and loose. Then we can twist that cover and unlock it. We're actually going to feed all of our wires through. We're going to remove the tape. We're going to feed them all through the back of that cover. So we have enough slack to work with on the other end. And just push that back for now. And we start working on attaching our wires. So if we start on our plug, we start with that very center terminal. That's going to be our reverse terminal. Now, if we look at our legend here, the legend's going to let us know that the reverse signal is going to be the white and green wire. So we're going to go ahead and cut back that rubber end that they have there sealed on. And we're going to strip back the wire. We can take our connector and we're going to loosen up the set screw on that center pin. We can put our wire in place and tighten up the set screw. Now if we move over to the top section, that's going to say 12 volt. So that's going to be our 12 volt power. So we can go ahead and loosen that up and find the legend which one is going to be our power. And if we look, that's going to be the red wire with the green stripe. So we'll do the same thing. Cut it back and strip back the end. Now with these terminals, you can see that there's kind of a flat section. You're going to want to loosen it so that it opens up like that. We're going to take our wire and actually just put it in between the two plates. Once you have it in place, you can go ahead and tighten up that set screw, get it nice and secure. Now if we move over, the one that's going to be labeled TM, it's for trailer marker. And that's going to be this gray wire with the brown stripe on it. And we're just going to keep working our way around connecting all the wires to the corresponding connector until they're all connected. So this is what our plug should look like. If we're looking at the top, we should have our red wire with the green stripe for our power. Then we're going to have the gray and brown for our tail lights, and then the yellow with the gray stripe for our left turn signal, followed by our ground wire, which is going to be completely white. And then on the other side of that, we're going to have our blue wire, which is going to be for our brake signal, for our brake controller, followed by our green wire with the purple stripe, and that's going to be for our right turn signal. Now, once we have all those in place, it's always a good idea, and I always like to put a little bit of dielectric grease inside the connectors, and hopefully that'll keep any kind of corrosion from building up and keep that moisture from getting inside. So I'm just going to put a little bit inside the connector here, going all the way around. Now we're just going to basically fill this little area up with dielectric grease. And then we can take the back of our plug, slide it back over the wires. We're going to line it up and lock it back down. And once it's locked into position, we can flip it over. Grab that Phillips head screwdriver and tighten down that set screw so the wires coming out of the back of the plug are nice and secure. Now we just need to mount our plug and we're ready to go. Our plug's not going to come with any kind of hardware to get it in place and mount it, but I'm going to be taking some self tapping screws and screwing them right into the side of the bed. So I'm going to make sure that my plug is sitting where I'd like. And then with a 5 16 nut driver, I'm going to put those screws in place. So I'm going to hook up my tester and make sure that all my circuits are working properly. So if I turn my headlights on, we can see that it's picking up on my tester as well as my turn signals and the brakes. And just to be sure, we'll go ahead and hit the brakes and both turn signals. And if I hit the manual override, you can see it starts sweeping up and down. With everything working properly, we're ready to hook up to our trailer and hit the road.
And then I'll finish up your look at the Kurt 7-way RV style trailer connector for the vehicle end, part number C58155 on our 2018 Chevrolet Silverado 3500. Thanks for watching. Click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com and leave a comment if you have any questions.